and here we are at our second historical religious location associated with the Pepys, St Margaret's Westminster, where Samuel Pepys and Elizabeth Marchand de Saint-Michel married on the 1st of December 1655. They married in the height of the interregnum, England's only uh, era of a republic and a lot of the religious stuff due to the Puritans went out so they were married by a justice of the peace called Richard Sherwin Esquire. Oh, yeah. This is also the, uh, the politician's church as well. Frederick William Farrar. The interior of this church was completely restored, AD 1878. So G.G. Scott, RA architect, the painted windows in the church and vestry. Uh, look at the pulpit font <coughs> and credence table were presented between the years 1881 and 1894. The porches were built in 1892 and 1894. J.L. Parson, R.A. Architect, F.W. Farrar, D.D., Fellow of the Royal Society, Archdeacon of Westminster. What's that? We should go in. Is it this one? No, this is Dorothy Stafford. It's this one, I think. Blanche Parry. Blanche Parry, favourite and Lady in waiting to Queen Elizabeth I, one of Queen Elizabeth I's much loved people. The Queen afforded her a lavish burial when she died in this church and obviously a lavish monument too. Monuments, because there's an awful lot of them, will feature in a separate thing, apart from the very few a couple of very very important or special ones <coughs>
its baptistry and font. The windows are fairly plain along there because there was badly damaged in the wall, the original glass, a lot of it. Proper old wooden piers look with numbers on. Dudley. we go to our next most interesting or important memorial tucked right away in the corner over here within ye chancel of this church was interred the body of the great Sir Walter Raleigh Knight on the day he was beheaded in Old Palace Yard Westminster October the 29th Anno Domini <coughs> 1618 reader Should you reflect on his errors, remember his many virtues, and that he was a mortal. So, basically, judge not lest you be judged. I 
William Caxton, who first introduced into Great Britain the art of printing, who at AD 1477 or earlier exercised that art in the Abbey of Westminster. This tablet, in remembrance of one to whom the liter literature of, this, of his country is so largely indebted, was raised in Anno Domini MDCCCXX by the Roxburgh Club. L. Spencer and R. G. President. And you've got more lovely stained glass up there. We'll see if the high will tuck to last. How oh, brilliant. Oh, it's perfect, everything done to the last detail. Ignatius Sancho, African abolitionist and polymath, married Anne Osborne in this church, the 17th of December 1758. You use your endeavour to be a good man and leave the rest to God. I know um, the Lady Samophenia is going to absolutely love this one. My mum's going to love this for its stained glass and Samuel will love it for its memorials and everything else I should imagine.
thing is as well with these, with the organ accompaniments, what you have to do is wait until the organist is either having a break or finished playing and ask them if they mind if you share the video which has their music in it. Particularly in a place like this, I mean, you could be broaching on copyright infringement or just taking a liberty, it doesn't hurt to ask. And I've never had one say to me no. So. Oh, tell a lie, I did have one ask me not to put their music on TikTok because they detest TikTok. But <laughs> Facebook and YouTube was okay apparently. This is another interesting one here. To the Reverend James Palmer, BD. This monument was irreparably damaged by an oil bomb on the 25th of September 1940. The inscription was as follows. Here under is interred ye body of James Palmer, Bachelor in Divinity, born in this parish of St Margaret's in July of 1585. Most pious and charitable man, um, expressed in several places by many remarkable actions, and particularly to this parish, in building fair alms houses for twelve poor old people, with a free school and a commodious habitation for the schoolmaster, and convenient chapel for the prayers and preaching where he constantly, for diverse years before his death, once a week, gave a comfortable sermon. He endowed ye same with a competent yearly revenue, a freehold estate, committed to ye trust of a care of considerable persons of ye place, to be renowned, sorry, to be renewed as any die. He cheerfully ended his life ye 5th of January, 1659. Well, as you can well imagine, the Germans would have loved to have bombed Parliament, and this is back, it's like bang next to it, so it's lucky it's still standing at all, really. The 2nd Battalion Grenadier Guards were laid up on Sunday the 5th December 1993 in the presence of His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, KG, KT, Colonel of the Grenadier Guards. This is ideal really with the music because Samuel Pepys loved music. He wrote in his diary once when he heard, went to a musical event or performance that it made him really sick. As in sick as he'd been when he was in love with his wife when they first met. He was um, an interesting man. When he said sick he didn't mean like unwell, he was like, the, the, you know what I mean. It filled him with so much joy that it made him feel sick.
had an interesting relationship and would often row because Elizabeth didn't bring very much to the marriage. He would call her a beggar. And because he was the son of a tailor, she would call him a prick louse, which is a, an insulting and derogatory, derogatory term for tailors at the time. <laughs> Bless them. And here we are, the politician's door, when they come to their services members of the house and they will come through this door. It has the Beaufort portcullis on it and the Tudor roses. Lady Dorothy Stafford, wife and widow to Sir William Stafford Knight, more famous Tudor courtiers. The standard of the Normandy Veterans Association. Samuel and Elizabeth would have stood and taken their very simple, plain, puritanical marriage vows. The marriage was performed by a Justice of the Peace, Richard Sherwin Esquire. <laughs> 